Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to do a spoilery book chat for Cibola Burn, which is the fourth book in the Expanse series. Before I get started, I want to remind you that I have spoiler chats for the first three books, so I'm going to have those linked in the cards and in the description box. And of course there are going to be spoilers for the entire series up to book four in this video, but no spoilers past then, so if you're all good with that, let's get started. Now, as I mentioned in previous videos, this is actually a reread for me, and it's interesting to go back and revisit these books because I definitely am picking up things that I missed before, or in this case, I actually got a bit of a different impression. My memory of reading this book the first time was that it was a little bit disappointing because I didn't love it quite as much as the first three books. And while I would agree that I like the first three books more, I enjoyed this Book a lot more this time on reread and we'll get into why in a moment but I like the setup for this one as I talked about in my last video this whole book is set around the idea that people are finally able to move outside of the solar system and so it really shakes up the political setup that was done in the earlier books where you have Mars Earth and the belt and there really is nowhere else for people to go and so now this changes everything and yes of course we still have the same players but there's the question of well if you have a belter who doesn't live in the belt are they still a belter or are they something else and so of course there's a lot of themes about exploration and the new frontier and it just makes the setting quite different because most of this book is set outside of the solar system and I just think that the possibilities are so exciting and I really did enjoy that aspect to this book. From there let's talk about characters and in terms of perspectives I was excited to see that Havelock had his own because I really do like when they revisit characters that we've met before I think it makes it a lot easier to get attached to them or at least you know if it's someone that you recognize you know it takes a little bit less time to warm up to them and that was the case with Havelock and I also like the perspective of Bouja I'm probably saying that a little bit wrong um, both their perspectives are very necessary for this book they provide the two sides to the conflict I didn't find them as individuals very interesting certainly Bouja a little bit more because I think that he provided some good sympathy for the rebels and just you know helped to balance them out because without his character they are a very unlikable group and it's hard for us as the reader to be sympathetic to their cause when we see them immediately from the get-go being violent but we see that while he believes in the idea Idea behind the cause he of course is not willing to resort to violence anymore and is trying to stop things and so reaches out to Holden and he's just such a redeemable character so I do think he was a really necessary perspective from there I need to talk about Elvie and I probably have the most to say about her she is the reason I did not like this book on my first read-through so hear me out I was very excited when I first came across this perspective of this highly intelligent female scientist specifically a biologist and I remember really liking her until Holden showed up and then she became this lovesick puppy dog and I hated her infatuation with him. I hated the fact that she thought she was in love and for me it ruined her character. It made her pathetic and I just could not stand her and it just was such a letdown and because of that I couldn't see anything past that point and I really didn't appreciate her perspective in terms of the larger story. Now rereading it I got a bit of a different impression and I think that really came from paying close attention to what the authors were doing. Certainly it's not my favorite aspect but you can tell that it's meant to be very playful and you actually have her co-worker uh, the geologist basically pointing out that no she's not in love with him she doesn't know Holden she's just horny and they end up hooking up and I remember reading that part the first time around and it just rubbed me wrong that she was just having sex with everyone but now I realize that they're just calling her out they're saying that she's very sexually frustrated and she's just putting Holden on this pedestal and once she actually does get some sexual relief she realizes that she isn't in love with Holden and it really does resolve that plot. So I enjoy this plot a lot more the second time around. Don't think it was necessary but I can look past it at least because before I remember being so angry when they went there and just thought that they made her into this very very stupid woman which made me frustrated because I hate smart women that are stupid in books. 
but being able to look past that aspect of her character made me really appreciate her perspective in general in the book and I would actually say that her perspective is the most interesting even more interesting than Holden which I'll get to in a moment and that's the fact that her character is all centered around the exploration of this world getting to discover the new creatures of course she is tied in with the major plot with the alien technology and then trying to prevent everyone from going blind and I really like the fact that her perspective brings in some hard science or harder science into these books which is something I do miss when I first read the Expand series I was very new to adult science fiction and so I didn't mind the fact that it's a very soft series that doesn't really take a lot of time to explain anything that's happening now that I am a more seasoned science fiction reader I really do like those little things and tidbits a season throughout a book and so I actually liked when she started talking about biology and just bring in those little nuggets. I don't know how much fact checking they did but for me it made it very enjoyable because that is something I look for in my science fiction. I don't always need it. It's not a criticism of a book if it doesn't have it but I did really enjoy those parts and like I said I think that her perspective was really the focus of the plot and was just very exciting and suspenseful and gave us more information or at least a tidbit of more information into what is going on with this ancient alien technology which you'll hear me say in every video I am so fascinated by that aspect of the series and I always always want more. So I ended up really enjoying her perspective a lot more than I thought I would going in because I had such negative feelings towards her and I'm glad I was able to get a more well-rounded perspective this time around. Finally, I got to talk about Holden and the rest of the Rossi crew. We got a little bit more backstory on Alex, which is good because I do find that he's the least fleshed out. But despite learning a little bit more about him and his ex-wife, I still find him to be the least interesting of the crew. Naomi wasn't featured a lot, and I didn't love the fact that she is kind of shown to be Holden's squeeze, and so she keeps kind of getting kidnapped or put in these vicarious situations. But at least they did acknowledge that she definitely can take care of herself and they basically implied that trying to kidnap her or hold her hostage was a terrible idea because she is way too smart for anyone that is trying to pull that stuff on her. Of course we also have Amos and in this one I really noticed there is a ton of back and forth hilarious banter between him and Holden and I really did enjoy it. There were so many quotable lines in general in this book and I just loved it. One of my favorites, I'm paraphrasing, but when Holden is saying there's no coffee here, he's like, this is a terrible, terrible world. And just a lot of other quotes that really stuck out to me when I was reading it. And of course, I was really happy to see Bobby in the prologue and Abyssalia in the epilogue along with Bobby again, because I love those two ladies and so I'm always happy to see that they're brought back, even for little tiny parts, I will take anything that I can get. Of course, I've got to talk about Miller again, or at least the Miller thing, and I love the back and forth as he continues to haunt Holden's mind, and you also get to find out that part of the protomolecule, or at least some goo, is somewhere on the ship, which is causing Miller to be able to stay attached to Holden even when they travel to other solar systems, and I loved how freaked out Holden got when he realized that that was what was happening, and of course, of course, the best part was Millerbot. I loved Millerbot. I totally forgot about it until I was rereading it. And I was also equally crushed when, of course, Millerbot did not get to stay around. I knew that was coming, but I loved those chapters so much. It was just hilarious and just a lot of fun. Now, just to wrap up a few other thoughts, I really did enjoy the fact that at the end you have Holden scraping the goo off of the ship and getting it destroyed. So it's a question of whether or not Miller will be able to continue to haunt or follow him around. And then of course we also have the fact that Holden is growing as a character. You get to find out that he let Baja go and did not decide to prosecute him through the justice system. And I think that that is a really interesting thing that is showing some really good character progression 
in terms of Holden because he has always been such an idealist and really sees everything in black and white. And so the fact is that he is starting to see things a little bit more like Miller. He's not going crazy, but at the same time, he realizes that things are more nuanced and by following the letter of the law, is he really getting justice done or is he just breaking up a family unnecessarily? So I really do like to see these later books as Holden matures and just how far he comes from where the story began. And I really thought that that was well done and very believable is probably the best part. And then of course we have that epilogue with Avicelia and Bobby as I mentioned. And I just love that they set up a larger conflict for the story and point out that the happy ending that Holden made on the planet perhaps isn't actually as perfect as it seems and can just lead to further problems as people continue to exit our solar system and move out to this new frontier. And so once again, I think the authors do an amazing job of making you want to keep reading because you get to see that things are going to become more complicated and they just make the politics so nuanced and Avicelia just calls it like it is. So if she's seeing the warning signs on the wall, you know that the trouble is coming and I am so excited to keep reading. From here, I'm looking forward to reading book five, Nemesis Games, which is one of my all-time favorites. It's a fan favorite, so if there's any doubt or hesitation whether or not you want to keep reading this series, please do, please continue. Everyone loves book five. It's so good. You will love every single perspective and I will leave it there, but I'm very excited to return back to that one because I'm sure I'm going to have a lot to say about it. Otherwise, I think that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you missed any of my previous videos, links in the cards and description. And if you don't mind giving me a thumbs up and sharing this video around online, this is a little bit of a passion project for me. I don't get as many views on these videos, especially because I do include spoilery content so not everyone can watch them. So if you're still here, definitely I appreciate the support. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.